Hi everyone, my name is Nina Melendez. I am the virtual content specialist for the multilingual learners and English language learners for math grades nine through 12. Today we are going to be looking at Algebra 1, week 24, day 11, intro to quadratic functions lesson. And we're going to focus specifically on using Desmos. So you are going to be using Desmos specifically in the explore part of this lesson. So you're first going to be working on the launch portion of your lesson, the introduction launch portion, and then you are going to move on to the explore. For Desmos, you will have had to complete this explore portion of the lesson in which you are looking at Elena and Diego's table, and you will refer back to it for your Desmos portion of this lesson. Inside C Explore, this is specifically where we are going to be using our Desmos graphing calculator. Our Desmos graphing calculator is linked right into the slide, right here in blue, where it says use the Desmos graphing calculator to graph both Elena and Diego's tables. So I'm going to do that first. Use the Desmos graphing calculator to graph both Elena and Diego's table. I'm only to, going to graph Elena's table. Where is this table? It's the table that was on the previous slide, Elena's table. So I'm going to graph the ordered pairs provided here. Remember, you can expand on the ordered pairs to be able to graph them all, okay? But I'm going to graph the ordered pairs um, provided here. So I'm going to go ahead and click into Desmos graphing calculator. Now, when I go into Desmos, I'm going to see that it says log in or sign up. If you haven't done so already, I would suggest that you log in. Don't click sign up unless you do not use a Google platform at your school. This means you can click log in with either your DOE or your school Google email. I'm going to go ahead and log in and click log in with Google. <clears throat> and log in with the school email. Now, once logged in, you're going to see that your name pops up on the top right corner of your screen. You see your name pops up on the top right corner of your screen. So once your name is there, you are able to go ahead and you're going to be able to save this work later on in the lesson. I'm going to go ahead first and I'm going to write my ordered pairs. So remember, they're given as a table, but a table are just a set of order pair or coordinates. So I'm going to put them in parentheses. So I'm going to go ahead and look at these 0, 0, 116, 264 and go ahead and go into Desmos and in parentheses put zero comma zero one sixteen and two sixty four now it's asking me if I want to label them I would like to label them so I'm gonna ask for it to be labeled now, if you only see the 100, you can always click zoom out to be able to see more of your graph and see where the rest of your coordinates are. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at the rest of this question. It says, then explain whose graph matches the expression 16t squared and whose graph matches the expression 576 minus 16 t squared. Explain your reasoning. So I'm going to go ahead and um, only look at one of these, not look at both. I'm going to look at um, 16 t squared. And instead of using t, I'm going to use x. Remember, I want to write a function. So I'm going to write it in terms of y equals. So y equals 16. Instead of t, I'm going to use x squared. And I see that a graph, remember the purple, 
it's right here, purple, matches this pops up. I can also zoom in and zoom out to see clear. Now, it seems like these points pass through this graph, but I want to make sure. So really good thing about Desmos is that I could go ahead and click on this function and ask for a table to be generated. The way I do this is that I go to my edit list and I go down here and ask to convert to table. When I ask to convert to table, I will see that a table is generated. And I am able to see whether or not these coordinates from the table match to the table that Elena had. Now, after doing this, I want to share my table and graph. But how do I do this? So remember at the beginning, we created an account. I have my name right here in the corner. So right now this is called untitled graph. I'm gonna go ahead and open this and name my graph. I like to put my name and I'm going to write um, intro quadratics. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write Elena's table. I know I what know part of the portion I can do in a separate one for Diego's table. And that way I can have them separate and analyze them separately. And I'm going to click Save. Once I have clicked Save, anything I do here, let's say I um, delete a coordinate, for that to, stay, to be deleted, I would have to click Save again. Now, I don't want to do that, so I am just going to go ahead and write the coordinate, click label, and then click save and make sure that it's saved. So if I want to share this graph as a link, because now I've created this link that lives on the internet, I'm going to go ahead and right next to my name, I have the share graph icon. I'm going to click the share graph icon and copy the share link that's provided there. Once I copy that share link, I could go into the lesson and I can actually just click into the slide and edit, paste, enter, and the link will be there. How does this help? So if I am your teacher and I want to look at this graph, all I have to do is go in here and it'll open up your specific graph. Open up your specific graph that you created with everything that you've saved in it. I can also go ahead and title it up here, Elena's table, okay? That way I know I'm referring to Elena's work and that way when I need to compare Diego's work, I can do a second link for Diego. Now, if I need to screenshot this, um, each one of your devices screenshots differently. I'm going to show you how I can screenshot it on my device, but depending on the device you have, you could just screenshot directly with commands on your device. So let's say I, I, have, I have a Mac. I can com click Command Shift 4 and screenshot a portion of my screen. And if I want to insert this into the lesson, all I have to do is click edit, no, sorry, insert image and upload from computer. I'm going to insert my latest image and I can modify the size to make it fit where I want it. And I can then share this to, I can share the graph this way with my teacher. Remember that you're doing this for Elena and for Diego's table. I would do it in two separate, um, two separate graphs. That way you can analyze them and explain if it's better to do it in one than just do it in one. I hope this has been helpful and I will see you in a later lesson.